All right, it's been a while since I've done one of these. Don't fret, I know some of you like this format of videos from my channel, and don't worry. More are on their way. For today, we have this. A keyboard sent over by Keymove, makers of the Angel K68, and it's their new budget offering. Let's check it out and see if it's any good. But before we continue with the video, let's keep the lights on here in the studio. This video is brought to you by Sneak Attack Design Lab. They're a clothing company that specializes in technical fashion, more commonly known as techwear, and you can see me in their clothes in most of my videos. I've been supporting their brand ever since I met them back in 2019, and now they're returning the favor. Head on over to this link, you can find it in the description as well, to get 10% off your order from their site. Check their clothes out, you're bound to see something badass over there that'll look great on you. Thank you very much to Sneak Attack for this exclusive promo for my viewers. Now, back to the video. Inside this box is the TMKB T63 Mechanical Wireless Keyboard. Like I said in the intro, TMKB is a sub-brand of Keymove, the brand that makes the Angel K68. This one is a pretty great keyboard, and I've modded it to be a near-silent tactile keyboard with customized Otemu purples. I love it. Onto the T63. It comes in a pretty small box with some foil detail on the front. Am I the only one kind of entertained that TMKB stands for Technology Mechanical Keyboard? <laughs> anyway, flipping the box over, we can see that sparse details are given about the T63, with only contact details and Keymove's address printed at the back. On the side, we can see all the available variations of the T63, and apparently this one is the white version with wired 2.4 GHz and Bluetooth connectivity. It has blue switches. I originally requested for this to come with yellow switches, but those were out of stock when I was ordering. So clicky blues it is. Opening up the box, we immediately see the keyboard in a plastic bag, and underneath some cardboard is the white braided USB-A to USB-C charging and data cable, and even a keycap puller. This is not a hot swappable keyboard, so no switch puller is provided. Underneath the keyboard, we can see a single sheet manual. Here we can see all of the keyboard shortcuts. Pause this here if you want to read it. Taking out the keyboard from the plastic bag, we're greeted with the T63 in all its glory. From first glance, we can see that it's a fairly budget-minded keyboard, definitely fitting for beginners in the hobby. The entire housing is plastic and is of a similar profile, not to mention dimensions, as my RK61. But as we can see, it definitely has a few more keys. This is the first time I've encountered a 63 key layout. Here on the left hand side, things look pretty standard with the long shift in the standard bottom row. But here on the left side, things get a little funky. First off, the top three rows look to be standard. But then on the fourth row, we see that the forward slash and question mark key has been moved to the far right end with the shift key made shorter and moved beside the greater than sign. On the bottom row, we're missing a right control key, but we do keep a navigation cluster. Overall, it looks pretty unorthodox. The changed position of the question mark key, I feel, might mess with my typing experience, but you're going to have to wait for my full review for that one. On the front left of the keyboard is the USB-C port. And flipping the keyboard over, we can see that it has four rubber strips around for feet, height adjustable flippy feet, a little slot for the 2.4 GHz USB-A receiver, and a power switch. Alright, that's everything for the outside. Let's power it on. Turning on the keyboard, we can see that it has some pretty bright RGB. Definitely brighter than my RK61, and almost on par with my brightest RGB keyboard, the Womier K66. We can see that the legends are definitely OEM budget keyboard type. These are ABS double shot keycaps, so these legends will never fade. The same can't be said about the secondary prints though, like the extra functions. So expect them to fade after prolonged use. Unlike my usual unboxing and first impressions, I will leave the discussion of all the functions and RGB modes to the full review. What I will do different in this episode though is a teardown to see what's inside. So let's get it disassembled. Upon removing all the keycaps, we can clearly see the TMKB branded blue switches. If I had to guess, these are probably Gatron blues. We can also see that they use plate-mounted cherry stabilizers, and they are pre-lubed. 
Let's undo these six screws and take off the plate to see the inside of the TMKB T63. God, the metal plate is so hard to remove from the body, it's stuck in there really tight. I mean, it's a good thing from a modding perspective because the keyboard won't be rattly or anything. After getting the plate free from the body, let's disconnect the board from the battery first by undoing this single cable. Alright, here's the plate and the board of the TMKB T63. As we can see, it is not a hot swap board. But then again, I am planning to mod this to a hot swap one after my full review, so be on the lookout for that. As we can see from the sides and a little peek through at the holes, the plate and the board are sandwiching an EVA foam layer. This is pretty great, since it's not a hot swap board, it's practically impossible to add dampening in between the board and the plate. Good thing the MKB already includes one in the assembly. I might swap it out for some poron foam once I mod it though. Moving on to the bottom case, we can see that it also has some light, closed cell foam tucked in here to further reduce body resonance when typing. It is fairly light though, and I suspect a lot of you will want to replace this with a denser foam. I know I will. Underneath the foam, we see the huge 3000 mAh battery that supposedly lasts months if the keyboard is used without RGB. We will put that to the test in the full review. Before we put it back together, I'd just like to point out that the build on this keyboard is pretty amazing for something so cheap. No loose tolerances, pretty solid quality and precision design. It doesn't feel like a budget keyboard at all. Alright, let's put it back together for the sound test. For the sound test, just to give you guys a relative volume and timbre reference point, here's my RK61 with KTT Kang White V3 switches. And my Womir K66 with Kale Box White switches. Now that you've heard those, here are the TMKB Blues on the TMKB T63. Damn, these are obnoxiously loud, <laughs> but to be fair, they're not ringy. They sound pretty good for a keyboard that has basic blue switches. And like I said earlier, I will be modding this keyboard, but I'll probably be keeping its clicky nature. I just might replace the blues with some other clicky switch. Leave a comment down below if you've got any suggestions for that. So that was the TMKB T63 wireless mechanical keyboard. Do you have any questions about it? Leave them down in the comments below and I will try to answer them in the full review. While you're there, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It helps to make more content like this. That's everything, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.